Radio.com. Ladies, have you been led astray? Did you diddle where maybe you shouldn't have dabbled? Have you been unfaithful to your husband, wife, partner, main squeeze? Well, there's a judgment-free podcast just for you. Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity, hosted by Rebecca Adams, tells the stories of these women from their perspective, anonymously and without judgment. I met the first man I had an emotional affair with online. He was far away, but he provided me with all of the emotional validation that my marriage was lacking. The first time we talked, he showed an interest in me as a person. It was refreshing. If you need to come clean, get it off your chest, confess your sins with no Hail Marys required, then Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity is the podcast for you. And remember, it's completely anonymous and judgment-free. Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe today. Hey, Nathan. What's up, Mike? You're a big energy drink guy, right? Yeah, I only have one, if not two energy drinks a day. You know that stuff is overloaded with sugar and ingredients you don't even know how to pronounce. Yeah, I do. Have you ever thought of having something that's a little bit more healthy? Well, you know what? I need something with a little bit of caffeine kick because that's why I use the energy drinks. Well, you might want to try something else. Try Focus. It's a sparkling water with a spark. Focus is a delicious, health-conscious, thoughtfully caffeinated sparkling water. It's infused with a boost of natural tea caffeine and the balance of L-theanine. You get the clean energy you want without the sugar, calories, or crash. Wow, that sounds really interesting. And they have a wide range of flavors, including blood orange, mixed berry, cherry cola. Cherry cola? Yeah, crisp apple, root beer, grapefruit. I like root beer. Yuzu and lime, cucumber and peach. Ooh, where can I get some, Mike? Go to www.drinkfocus.com. That's www.drinkphocus.com. And if you use our code Tech Time at checkout, you will get 20% off. 20% off? Wow. Yeah. Can't wait, can you? I'm going to go buy one of these today. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program the information that will make you go hmm pull up a seat raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person welcome to tech time radio with nathan mum welcome to tech time radio with nathan mum the show that makes you go hmm technology news of the week uh, the show for the everyday common person, bringing you segmented, stylized technology information before the mainstream media. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show. Our show airs live on Saturdays, 4 to 6 p.m. So that means if you're catching it at any other time, you're going to be catching a rebroadcast. So go to techtimeradio.com to find out more information with that. So again, that means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not 4 to 6 p.m. And Sunday, if you're listening to us, make sure you visit us online to stay up with all the greatest. Brought and to you by Captain Obvious. That's right. Oh, we are actually, you know what, David? It's just me and you today. We got we got a new guest in here. So yeah. we have uh, Mr. Yes, we do. Mr. Gorday was, uh, uh, Mr. Mike Gorday was coughing up a lung and he had to go on in and he got tested in. We are wishing a quick recovery, and I will tell you now that I know one person that was vaccinated that has COVID-19 on the Delta variant, so might get home and, and get well so that I can uh, play my Sea of Thieves with you, because that's, I mean, no, and get well so we can have you back on the program. I am here with two moms. You got, you got two hours <laughs> of Tech Time Radio with two moms. So this is my brother, Jonathan. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're in technology also, so tell us a little bit about yourself. I am in technology. I work for a company as a manager of the networking department Okay. and have been in tech since I was a little kid repairing. Move that a little bit closer so I can hear you a little bit louder. There you Great. go. Repairing there you go. the computers. That my brother would bring home and leave the parts laying around. That's right. So I'd bring home <laughs> old computers that I didn't like anymore, and I'd say, here you go, work on them. And so you got to work them. But you went to the Foster School of Business, graduated from the University of Washington. That's with right. a business and marketing degree. Your older brother told you not to get in technology, and what do you do? You got I technology. got in technology that's anyway. That's right. Okay. Well, welcome to our <laughs> two-hour show. We are packed today. We got our 
A uh, friend from Security Fanatics, Nick Espinosa, is going to be on for a segment. We have one of our interns that will be joining us today for a segment that we have coming on in Gamer Time for the first hour. In the second hour, we are loaded with cloud kitchens. Have you ever known what a cloud kitchen is? Cloud Kitchen is the new way of delivering food on the Uber Eats type deal and the delivery service. We got somebody that has a startup company uh, in India, and they're now moving to the States for this cloud startup. And we'll be talking a little bit about that. And if we have time, we have our Lace Award nominees coming on up. That's really exciting. That's our big award show that we do for streaming media. And we may have that at the end of the, the show also if we have time, but we'll, we'll see if we get time. All right. Uh, the most important thing we have, of course, is uh, we have David behind the board there. Again, our a little recap of what we got going on. The biggest and most interesting stories of our top five stories in the first five minutes. We will begin and start now. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. And you know what? I forgot to ask you the loaded you question. You did. So you know what? Before we start that, but they already played that. I'm going to ask you the loaded question of the day. If you had to live with a zoo animal, which one would you choose? Well, there's a lot of zoo animals that you wouldn't want to live with. Okay. Any that are too large for your house yeah. or might smell terrible. Okay. So I would probably go with one of the exotic birds. An that... exotic... I hate birds. <laughs> I hate birds. Birds are the worst thing. I hate... Uh, uh, so... You know this. So our, our grandmother and grandfather used to raise pigeons. They did. And when they raised pigeons, when they were gone on long vacations, I would go on out and have to feed the pigeons. Did you uh, ever? I, did you ever have to do that? Occasionally, I assisted, but I was usually uh, With trying mom. to get out and do something else. Yeah, something. yeah. So I'd have to go in there. And let me just tell you, birds are the worst. Birds, <laughs> they fly at you. They just barely swing by you. I watched the movie The Birds, uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh, yeah. That's and so that scared the heck story. out of me. Yeah, it scared the heck out of me. And then I had to go do pigeons. I hate birds. If there's a bird in my house or something like that, it's like, Tracy and the kids, you better go take care of it because I do not do flying things. All right. I, I would agree with you. An exotic bird would, would be a horrible thing to do. All right. Let's get into, though, our first story that we have here. Story number one. Very disappointing. Dell is canceling Alienware gaming PC shipments to several U.S. states. So for the time being, Dell will no longer ship their high-end Alienware, which is their video game, high-end laptop, high-end desktop configurations available. The Aurora R12 and the R10 gaming PC configurations are no longer being shipped to California, Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Vermont, or Washington State due to power consumption Regulations adapted by these states. An order has been placed that says these states will no longer allow to ship in their PCs because they use too much power. Spokes representative from Dell said that this has impacted their sales that was put into effect on July 1st, 2021, and now they are specifically no longer sending items. Now, if you go to eBay, I can buy one of these, and they, every single one of these models now are $200 more on eBay. So of clearly- course. Clearly, someone realized that people in Washington, which is a tech area, doesn't have these. So I talked about this with our big production group meeting that, that you, were, you weren't a part of. And I, I am absolutely irate about this. This bugs the crap out of me because I can have at home a Bitcoin mining machine that will use up 7x what this PC would put out for power, continuously mining Bitcoin, which I guess is legal to do. Uh, which it I still is. Yeah, which I shouldn't be doing um, instead of having this brand new PC that I can purchase. But I believe that a lot of these laws that, that are being adopted are because of exactly that, those Bitcoin mining machines that are using so much energy to do its computational power to make the Bitcoin or whatever other currency they're trying to mine and perhaps are trying to counter just the general energy waste that... That people are okay, buying let me, these large okay. machines. Okay, so this is going to happen now with television too, right? So televisions, your big high-end 70-plus-inch televisions that consume high rate. So I, I can't get the highest-end Sony television now shipped to Washington? Is that what's going to happen to me next? Well, at the same time, technology keeps getting better that they're using less power to do the same thing that our technology was doing 5, 10 years ago. Yeah, that is a crap, though. I don't know. I, I, I'm just <laughs> let me just tell you. Don't don't let me not get my high end PC because what I'm going to end up doing is buying all the parts. I can buy all the parts for a desktop 
individually ship it to me and then I can build it myself and I'm still going to do exactly what you're doing. So I don't get what you're trying to do on your energy consumption deal for laptops. Bad idea. Okay. Story number two. That's how I feel. Is that, I'm very, you feel very strongly about uh, that. Yes. Yeah. Don't be messing with my PCs. If I want to play a brand new game on my PC and enjoy it, don't tell me that little wattage has anything to do different than my Bitcoin and machines out that I have in, in, in the outside area that's just generating electricity all over everywhere. You're just going to play on your Xbox anyway, though. Yeah, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Story number two. Older Kindles may lose internet connection. Amazon warns. Now, let me just tell you this. Amazon story, a little bit off gear. This is, I'm going off subject. I got uh, an email from YouTube asking me if I am in compliance with FCC on my Amazon sponsorship. Okay. So they literally think, because I bag on, on our radio show, David, <laughs> we bag on Amazon so much that they actually, their algorithm, thought that I was trying to represent Amazon and Amazon was paying me to, to do their products. I responded to the email, said, have you listened to my show? There's no way Amazon <laughs> would pay me a dime to be on my show, let alone do that. So I responded- It would be crypto anyway. <laughs> That's right. So so I just thought that, so there's so, so another next, Amazon. So next you're gonna get an email saying that Facebook is sponsoring the show too. Yeah, it's, 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 that's right. It's gonna be Amazon <laughs> and Facebook because those are the two that I hate the most. That's right. All right, so older Kindles may lose internet connection, Amazon warns. Some older, now this is kind of, when I bought the original Amazon Kindles, they promised lifetime connectivity. That was the big selling point. They did. Lifetime connectivity. You could download your book at the beach. Yes. No, no matter where you go, you'll always be able to have this. Don't worry about it. And their first models they came out with had nothing to do with Wi-Fi. They only had, of course, their cellular service that was available. Right. Some older Kindle e-readers will no longer be available to connect to the internet to download new books, Amazon has said. First and second generation Kindles do not come with Wi-Fi functions and include only mobile internet that is available in 2G and 3G. Since 2G and 3G are being discontinued by some of the providers that Amazon has worked with, they are saying that they will no longer be able to be provided service in the United States. And this is outside of Amazon's control here. Outside of Amazon's control, but thanks, David. But they said that these devices would always be available. When Amazon was co uh, contacted regarding these machines, they said nothing. So mm. let me just tell you, Amazon, you promise connectivity. If you want to play nice in this space, offer a refund of trading in your old unit for a new unit so I can get a 4G compatible unit. Now, this has nothing again to do, as you just said, with Amazon. Has to do with 2G and 3Gs being retired by Verizon, AT&T, all these mobile carriers, which essentially Amazon pays on the back end for the ability for you to download books for, and they have everything taken care of. But um, again, Amazon uh, told us U.S. customers, sorry, starting in 2021, some of our Kindle e-readers e are no longer going to work. All right, last story. This is the one we were talking about this on the way in today. Disney sued by Black Widow star Scarlett Johansson over movie streaming release as a same day service. Now I've been all into this story. It's, it's, it is technology related specifically because streaming devices are what are causing this issue. Now, the Rock just uh, just did uh, the Jungle Book. Came on out just Not this the Jungle Book. The Jungle Cruise. Oh, the sorry, Jungle the, Cruise. The Jungle Cruise. Careful, right. he'll smack you down if you say it wrong. That's <laughs> right. Thank you very much. The Jungle Cruise. Essentially, it is bombing for the first week sales. But The Rock has come on out. Dwayne Johnson, the main star of it, and said that he will not sue Disney because of this. But Scarlett Johansson is suing specifically because her contract is based upon incentives, based upon how the box office sales are done. And Disney decided to release it the same day on Disney Plus, which has made more than $60 million on the streaming service without Scarlett Johansson getting a dime of those services. So what do you think? Does she deserve to win that lawsuit? Uh, I've... I've got some thoughts, and this topic may come back in the show later. Okay. In in another segment. Okay. Uh, because I think it ties well. The having a popular male actor who's in multiple releases is a bit of a different scenario than you've got a lone female finally getting a lead star in a movie who's been a side character when there's not a lot of say female leads, especially in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a, it's a little bit apples to oranges comparison to a 
to make that comparison there, I feel. Let me, I mean, I'll just tell you, I've seen both movies. Uh, I'll see Black Widow two or three more times again, where I, I don't think I'll, I fell asleep <laughs> last night watching The Jungle Cruise. So let me just tell you, that was not that good. All right, well, you know what? That is the end of our segment. Uh, our time is up. If you'd like to visit any of these stories, you can go and visit them online at techtimeradio.com and click on the episode section or our blog to find more details. Uh, now it's time to get ready as we go to break to chase some whiskey. Now, we had some r- horrible whiskey on last week, and, and Mike hated it. And so um, you, you brought out the good stuff. For I me this did. Week. You know what? I figured my brother was here, and since Mike's at home, we'll save it until he comes back to try some more of the, the lower end whiskey. So we have a great whiskey here, and we'll be tasting it off the uh, air and seeing if we like it. And at the very end of the show, give a thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down, Cisco and Ebert, rating to do that. All right, when we come on back, we got our technology insider with Nick Espinoza, our chief security uh, CIO from Security Fanatic and Forbes Technology Council member and NPR radio technologist. Uh, we're going to get an update on the Kaseya breach, and we're asking him a question on how do cyber gangs recruit online, and is it a real job? How do they grow their uh, cyber gangs? What is a cyber gang about? I've been asked this question a lot. Hmm. And so we're bringing in our expert. And I'm going to ask him the same questions that I get asked and see what he can uh, give us some information on. So Are we'll, you being asked to join one of those gangs? Uh, no, I'm not that good. No, <laughs> no, no. Back in my day, in my early days at Microsoft, yeah, you know, I kind of played on some bulletin board service stuff and uh, did a little bit of fun uh, type of deal, but I couldn't keep up with the kids nowadays. No, I, I, I'm not going to be asked to be on there. Um, if I would, I, I probably wouldn't be able to make it past the first uh, entry question they ask me. But we are going to go to a commercial break, and we'll see you guys right back after this. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Guess what? Our favorite sponsor is back. Oh, it's the Puzzle Dude from Unidragon. That's right, Unidragon. Yep, Unidragon.com. They have a brand new item. It's called the Playful Parrot. It's a five-in-one puzzle that comes on out that actually comes all the way up to the brand new size, which is the royal size. Now they're small, medium, king size, and royal size. So you can get seven times bigger than the standard puzzle. What do you think about the playful parrots? Being a pirate adventurer that you are, Mike, what say you? Oh, the owl's jealous. The owl's jealous? Uh Uh-oh, what's the owl saying about the parrots? Oh, there's five of them and one of him. That's right, that's what happens. You know what? When you're the original, sometimes you get replaced and upgraded. So if you want to get upgraded in your puzzles, now's the time to go to unidragon.com. Again, that's unidragon.com. Don't be fooled by other imitation puzzles makers only get your true puzzle from unidragon.com they're the best and they're the world's leader in wooden puzzles tech time listeners use promo code dragon tech again that's dragon tech for a 10 percent discount code discount expires on august 1st 2021 they're no longer three sizes mike guess how many they are now they're four sizes. That's right. They're four sizes. Make sure to visit techtimeradio.com forward slash sponsors and click on the order now button to go directly to Unidragon. Our number one sponsor says thank you. And the owl is jealous. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. I'm your host. So we got my... Little brother Jonathan Mum in on the show, also co-hosting. So as we come on back now, we're going to do our uh, pick of the day, which is our Smooth Ambler 92 proof, $35 bottle, a little bit nicer than what we've had on the last couple of weeks. Um, it is bottled a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys. It's a marriage of wheat bourbon made in West Virginia. Two different types of rye bourbon are in the process from Tennessee and Indiana, respectively. Uh, it's won awards the World Whiskey Award Gold Medal. And what do you think about it, Jonathan? Right off the bat, the first taste that I got was really the uh, the woodiness, the oak that it's got in there. Okay. And I could tell it was a blend. It didn't really veer in any one straight direction with its taste palette. It's It's got unique elements, particularly probably because of the blend that they chose to use for this. So it's 
to very round it out on on pretty much all of the edges. All right. See, you know, let me tell you, my brother is way more of a, a whiskey connoisseur than I am. But I appreciate you for being on the show. We have a couple listeners that are specifically watching today's show because they know you're on to give their whiskey uh, appraisal, and they'll, they'll take that from that. So, oh, dude, we'll, we'll get more later. That's right. There's a dude for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we're going to move right on on. So, at, remember, at the end of the show, you're going to have to give a thumbs up or thumbs down. And if you uh, I'll be ready it, for and that. if you really want some bad whiskey, we can go pull out some of the uh, Canadian uh, from last week. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we're avoiding that this week. All right. Okay. Welcome back. So we are going to move on to our next segment. Our next segment is called Technology Insider. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right, we're bringing up Nick Espinoza, the chief security fanatic, CIO, Forbes Technology Council member, NPR radio host, uh, Twitter extraordinaire for technology jokes and questions throughout the week. So if you want to get on his Twitter account, he sends out funny little jokes about different technology items. And we would love to have you back today, Nick. Now, our question to you, are you drinking some whiskey again? Is the sky blue? Is the oh, that's right. There you, I mean, there you, there you go. Now, now I am, I am, I am going with one of my favorite standbys, which is Lagavulin. Okay, and, uh, I've mentioned okay. them before, but I am curious to know, Nathan, if you did get a bottle of Legent, which is the one that I had last time, that was just phenomenal. Or if, if you haven't gotten it yet, no worries. So we no. have, we have, and so that is sitting okay. on my uh, back. I, uh, I'll bring it back when Mike is here, so we will have that. But I still have to give him one other. Horrible tasting whiskey. So once Mike <laughs> comes back, the first week there's a one no spoilers. That, and Mike, week. if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> and then after that we will absolutely have it. We'll have to make sure you're right. on during that show too. So we'll I would love sure it. I would. Lo I'd love to get a. I'd love to tell me I'm wrong or I'm right. But also okay. speaking of speaking of Amazon or another major company paying you when they absolutely shouldn't, uh, I did a video a couple of years ago in 2019 called "It's Time to Put Mark Zuckerberg in Jail." And then I posted it on Facebook and boosted the post and paid Facebook 10 bucks to advertise it for me. And they did for a few days until they actually caught it. And so there you go. I thought there that, you was, go. Uh, that, was a, that was a fun one. So here you yeah, are. that is perfect. That is perfect too. Yeah. So I was so blown away on the Amazon one. I'm like, what? Do you think I'm actually sponsored? Whatever robot AI you have on there, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I may say Amazon a lot, but I'm clearly not saying, hey, we're really excited about Amazon. So, all right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. I know that you had some family event stuff today, so I don't want to keep you forever, but I do no have worries. two, two important questions. I'd love to get an update on the Kaseya breach. Uh, specifically, we talked about that, I think, two or three weeks ago when you're on the air. Love right. to get an update on that. And then I really want to dig into cyber gangs and how uh, people get recruited from that. But let's get an update on the Kaseya report. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting because uh, Kaseya basically has come out now and said, hey, we have a decryptor. And if you want the decryptor, we're more than happy to give it to you. And uh, you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement or NDA in order to get this. Now, they basically... Um, they, 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 they have said that they have not paid Revil or R Evil for this decryptor. And so that's interesting because they publicly denied this, but they're actually, like I said, asking for these NDAs and it's gonna make it much harder to analyze this situation in terms of understanding how this decryptor works, you know, and the inner workings of this, especially with an NDA, if nobody is talking about this. Now, Kaseya says that this, this decryptor they have is 100% effective in decrypting, which basically is leading many cybersecurity experts, including myself, to believe this key actually came from Revil directly before Revil disappeared. The question remains though, did they actually get it directly from Revil or did they get it from an intelligence or law enforcement agency that might've hit Revil and then turned it around and given it to Kaseya quietly? That's a real speculation here. We don't have confirmation either way on that one, but that's essentially where we're at right now. Also, uh, Kaseya has other products out there, one of them being Unitrends, uh, which is a backup solution that had apparently zero day vulnerabilities in that, which actually reinforces something I said the last time I was here, and that executives from Kaseya have essentially anonymously come out to uh, outlets like Bloomberg saying that Kaseya was really focusing more on sales than they were on software development and security. And here we are, Unitrends obviously being a major player uh, you know, in mid-size to enterprise backup solutions. So that's obviously a huge problem, but good news uh, you know, for those companies that were affected, if they need a key, Kaseya can actually give them the decryption key they need. Yeah, so very, <laughs> very, very interesting. 
That's a great analogy of that, right? So supposedly they, they didn't get it from the evil people um, that, that created the crypto, but they had it very, the encryptor very quickly. And they want you to sign an NDA to get it. Yeah, all, all of that stuff is so fishy. Specifically, another part of Kaseya is they have another side little small company called IT Glue, which isn't as small, but that is essentially a document management uh, area where they keep users' passwords, information, and it's known that during this breach, that IT glue library for all these clients was also compromised. So yeah, so yeah. a very, a very Good interesting, problem. very, very shady type of deal to sign an NDA right. as a customer afterwards to get a decryptor. You know, and so, and I, I would say the interesting part of that too is that during the data breach. Uh, as they were going to their actual customers, these are the IT companies, the managed service providers, uh, you know, that are administering these 2,000 odd companies that got hit through this. Uh, they were being rather transparent to say, here's what we're doing, here's how we're trying to remediate this and all of this, and then to turn around and do this, that, you know, it, it, it is a bit suspicious to me in that sense. I'm not saying that Kaseya is doing anything wrong here, but to keep your cards close to your chest after going through uh, something this big is, is, is a very serious problem. The Japanese actually have a saying, that says the only way forward is through truth. And I think this is one of those things where transparency is just beyond key. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, so let's move on. Well, I don't know if this was intended as a segue into this next question that okay. you're going to talk about. What's that? But if you had your hacking group, Revil, yep. and if you have a rival hacking group, yeah. and you wanted to dismantle the work that your rivals were doing, how better would you do that by helping another company that they just... Ah, that could have happened too. That could have happened too. I just, I just find it very... Clearly, they don't have the technology chops to stop a breach happening. And now, all of a sudden, they have the technology chops to have a... Yeah. I, right. I, well, so, it sounds like I, it something came fishy. from somewhere well, outside. I, 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 I will say this, though, Jonathan. That would assume that a rival group had the cryptographic capability to break strong encryption created by somebody else. Or knew something. You know, I mean, think yeah. think about it. Imagine a person locked out of a Bitcoin wallet and doesn't have their passphrase or their decryption key. I mean, you have to find a way or a vulnerability through that because odds are the encryption in the in the wallet is going to be so tight that you're not going to be able to do that. That's and right. So, Usually so by virtue of that, I mean, I mean, if if I'm a rival gang to Revil, the last thing I want to do is waste my time. I would rather say, look, these guys are hot in the news right now. Come to me. Nobody's talking about me in the news. You're going to be more safe from law enforcement intelligence agency. I'd let them burn. That That's would right. personally be what I would do if I was a criminal. So that, that, that makes sense. All right. Talking about Revo. Revo retires. And then immediately, uh, it's just it's just kind of interesting. We have this brand new group that just popped up called Black Matter, announcing a new ransomware. Uh, it's, it was really big on the Russian uh, language forums that offering the greatest hits or the greatest hacks that were previously done by Revil that has been disbanded. So yeah. is that just reskinning your group and kicking out a couple members and adding in some new members? Is it a brand new group? Um, the, the story is still out on that. It's very interesting that some of the terminology used uh, in this new group's area is using the same exact code that Revo used previously. But let's ask you the next question, Nick. I wanted to all of a sudden become a cyber criminal, or not really, but <clears throat> if I did, and I was to enter into one of these cyber gangs, how do they go about recruiting people to their gangs? Sure, sure. And uh, and in terms of just with the previous point with Black Matter, there are it is looking like there are remnants of Revil, Darkseid, and another group called Lockbit that are actually there. I think what will what will emerge from Black Matter really depends on what we see in the IOCs or indicators of compromise that we'll see. Is this just a rebranding of Revil? You know, they pulled up stakes and you know laid low for a little bit, and now here we are. We'll see. But to get to your question regarding recruiting into a cyber gang, first thing first, I mean, money attracts talent, right? So for example, um, you know, in September of last year, Revil deposited $1 million worth of Bitcoin on a Russian speaking hacker forum as part of a drive to recruit more members. They did this basically to prove that they had the financial means to employ new recruits. They also announced that they were specifically looking for new affiliates as well, who would be responsible for hacking organizations. Now, after that, these forums in Russia 
actually, as they were popping up, started banning these recruitment efforts because they didn't want to come under the target of international law enforcement. And so now a lot of these groups started, have started to uh, leverage their own websites, meaning the leak sites in the dark web, as well as other sites they're putting up to promote features uh, of their encryption tools, basically saying, hey, you know, we are not Rebel, we're Black Matter, we're somebody else, and, and we have the best stuff out there. So please come use our stuff, and we will profit share with you. You know, if you can basically, if one of these groups can find a previously unknown hacker, a criminal hacker, and start leveraging them for these attacks, then it greatly benefits the, 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 the gangs, because it makes their core members harder to attack and harder to track as well for law enforcement. Now, one, one interesting example of this that I want to bring up is a ransomware. It's a service group known as Himalaya. A lot of people don't know who Himalaya is. And for affiliates, they've actually put out there on their site that they will basically give you a 70% commission and an all-around designed um, encryption malware that you can use, which is known as FUD, fully undetectable, and they will give this to you. They want 30%. You can take 70% uh, of the ransom that you can get using their service. And I think one thing to note here is that like the former Revil and Black Matter, Himalaya actually spreads out um, basically a strict rule regarding its targets. So like Revil, they're saying they're not going to attack medical services. They're not going to attack nonprofits. They're also not going to attack governmental agencies, which is typically uh, what gets them high profile. Think, you know, solar winds and hacking the treasury kind of thing, which obviously wasn't Revil, but but those are the kinds of things they want to avoid for scrutiny. Colonial pipeline would be another one that doesn't obviously speak to the supply chain. So I don't have to hit a hospital, but if I hit the manufacturer of the PPE or the trucking company that moves that PPE out, that's an issue. So as we are looking at these recruiting, we're seeing them basically pop up, advertise excellent rates, what they'll do for you and everything. And the nice part about ransomware as a service, if you're a criminal, is that you don't have to be a cryptographer you know, to figure out this new and unusual cryptography that nobody can break in order to hit it. You're just using what they are creating themselves as a service and everybody's making money and everybody's winning, obviously, except us, the general public. That's right. All right. So let's talk about what are the salaries for these people? Do they get paid salaries if I'm a part of a crypto gang and I make it on there? Or do they get paid based upon customer breaches? How do they go about funding and keeping these cyber criminal gangs kind of in place? Other than that 30% commission. Other than the 30% commission, right, correct. Right. But like well, the actual so workers that do the cryptology, not the, the people that say, hey, here's a company I can bombard. Let's go after this commercial property and, and different stuff. But how do we pay the actual intelligent crypto uh, cartographers of, of what's being done there? Right. So under, understand for the record that, that usually these things are kind of partnerships, but they typically pay through the job. So for example, if I'm a partner in a, in a cyber gang and I'm building the actual cryptography that's going to hit you, Nathan, and your company, uh, then I'm going to basically get a percentage of that. And every other company that basically my cryptography is used in. So essentially, this is being paid by job based on, on a formula. Understand, though, that these groups are making millions of dollars a year. Revil alone was claiming 100 million US annually that they were making. And that, that's not including the payouts to affiliates and, and, and everything else. So a single successful hack on the right target can net millions of dollars for an attacker or a group of attackers, even with that with that profit share ratio. And I think it's important to understand too that many of them are coming from areas that are economically depressed as well. You can't really get a, a McJob, if you will. So when faced with either not having a job or let's say a really poorly paying one, this is a way for them to live very well. And if you're being directly trained by a gang, they're basically pounding it into you that all you're doing is hitting fat, rich Americans. So it's you know, no harm, no foul. The Americans can afford it and they've got insurance. And so we're making money off of them and, and you're basically living high on the hog in that sense. So so by virtue of that, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm a, in joining a criminal enterprise, I'm going to want a percentage of every hit, if, especially if they're using my technology, my creation, my intellectual property, if you will. Or if I'm part of the gang and I'm doing something, I'm also going to get a percentage. And when, you know, the average payout of these things on is something like $80,000 a ransom and we've got tons of these going on, I'm going to be making Making, I'm going to be making Ferrari money. Let's just put yeah, it that way. It's it's yeah, going to be a lot of cash. That makes sense. All right, last question before we go because we've got a busy day today. No worries. How do you move up if I'm a good cyber hacker and I wanted to create, like, let's say I, I used to play Quake too, and I was a really good Quake guy. 
And I and I had a clan, right? So we created a clan and I had tryouts. And then when people got too good to be in my clan, they went on out and they started their own clan. Is that the same thing that happens here kind of in the cyber criminal gang? If I get so good, I can create my own gang or how do they go about creating those? Well, so when it comes to organized crime, this is so unbelievably prolific right now. I mean, it's so easy to sit across the world and hit everybody else, you know, and all you have to do is get in front of a keyboard as opposed to like drive a whole army somewhere. So think about it this way. In today's current market, you either have to have a deep understanding of cryptography so you can create a new method for encryption for ransomware or you have to be really excellent at something like exploitation of vulnerabilities such as phishing or figuring out ways to get around those firewalls to get into that network and honestly you got to have some business sense if you're going to start something right how many people you know create a business and then fail because they don't know how to manage it i mean yeah. these are rather polished operations revil was incredibly polished and streamlined and they required basically due diligence of their people to maintain their security and their privacy that's why they lasted for as long as they did the ones that get caught are the ones that are lazy internally they're not working on their own business for lack of a better term here so basically they have to run a tight ship and if you're the leader of a group you're effectively enforcing the quote-unquote company policy if you will through technical administrative controls and so those that have some kind of tech savviness and business sense are the ones that will start that or they will hire the best cryptographers to create something completely new uh, but again it's a cutthroat world out there there are no honor among thieves when it comes to these guys in general so it's a huge problem that makes sense all right nick thank you very much for joining us we will have to thank get you, you back on when we got our whiskey and mike back here and we'll We'll have a little taste off before we do that. Enjoy the day. And if you want to connect with you, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, find me on LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube slash Nick Espinoza, or connect to me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. You know, Google me, you'll find me. No, that's worries. right. You will find him absolutely. And sign up and, and become a fan of his on Twitter so you can get all of his uh, little cartoons and little uh, tidbit stuff that he sends out. So, all right, Nick, thank you very much for joining the show. Take care, guys. All right, well, when we get back, we're going to take a commercial break. But when we have come on back, we have a segment in Gamer Time that is going to be a very interesting segment. Essentially, we are talking about Activision uh, and the lawsuit against them for sexual harassment, racism, retaliation, and other things that they're doing with more than 200 and, uh, 2,600 current employees that signed a letter and walked off the job. So it's computers specifically with video gaming and blizzard entertainment and activision on the xbox and other devices what is happening in the video game industry we'll be right back after this commercial break did you know that up to 12 to 15 percent of americans grind their teeth at night while they sleep hmm. yeah it's it's called bruxism i used to work at a sleep lab and we used to we used to measure that and it leads to a lot of uh problems like headaches and destroys your teeth it wears down the enamel and it's just very hard on your your mouth so every once in a while i'll wake up my jaw will hurt do you think i'm grinding my teeth at night yeah well so how do you go about protecting this then uh the number one recommended way of protecting yourself from teeth grinding is what's called a night guard which is a custom fitted prosthetic that you put inside your mouth it usually runs you know hundreds of dollars but i know our sponsor smile brilliant can get you custom fitted night guards for as little as 45 dollars a piece so if you go to smilebrilliant.com and use tech time radio at checkout you can receive 20 percent off your complete order so visit smilebrilliant.com and use the tech time radio at checkout code hey mike yeah what's going on hey have you heard of the highbrow dribble no but it sounds smarty pants to me highbrow dribble delivers hilarious takes from serious experts every week comedian anthony janeau introduces one of his comedian friends to an academic scientist politician or expert of some kind oh yeah what do they what do they do over the course of roughly an hour the group will offer thought-provoking topics expert guests and hilarious commentation well that sounds awesome host anthony gano is critically acclaimed stand-up comedian who has sold out shows in australia england scotland sweden and more but we're talking specifically about his podcast now called the highbrow drivel topics range from ethics and artificial intelligence to astronomy and dinosaurs really oh i love dinosaurs 
Do they talk about owls? Every week, it's a new comedian, a new expert, but the same highbrow dribble. Highbrow dribble is available on all major podcast players and at www.highbrowdribble.com. Again, that's www.highbrowdribble, D R I V E L.com. Yeah, that sounds like smart nonsense. Can't wait to listen. All right, welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Before the break, we talked about cyber gangs. Jonathan, did you enjoy a little bit of whiskey during that break there? I did get another sip of our whiskey here. Our the, smooth ambler? Yes, the that blend. I'm normally not t- getting a lot of blends. A little closer to that. I, yeah. I can hear you as loud. There you go. Okay. Uh, I'm normally not drinking as many blends. So right. this is a little different from what I'm used to. It's It's got some some interesting... Let's just say because it doesn't have that lack of character or personality, being a blend of the different whiskeys, it's it's a little hard to p- make out some of the uh, flavors in it, flavors and okay. elements to okay. it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to move on to our next segment. We got some big news, and we're going to start it right now. Welcome to Gamer Time. Activision Blizzard staff walks out over harassment claims. Activision's bizarre or Blizzard's lawsuit is essentially against Activision and its executives. The day of the walkout, they released two bombshell pieces in the investigation. Essentially, details have come that there is alleged booze-fueled antics of a group of male Activision Blizzard employees that developed a hotel room they referred to as the Cosby Suite. While Activision is currently in the spotlight, this systematic issue is not limited just to Blizzard, but the whole video game industry in itself. Uh, We're going to get ready to start a roundtable discussion up here. We're bringing up Emily, one of our show writers and weekly contributors. Emily is joining us. She hosts her own podcast also. So, Emily, welcome to the show. Uh, We're glad to have you on. I know when we talked about this in our pre-show meeting, there was a lot of... uh, uh, I wouldn't say anxiety, but everybody wanted to talk about this. So Jamar sent the same news article. Gwen sent the same news article. Everybody sent this article in. And Emily, we absolutely want to get your take on this. We want to get Jonathan's take on this. Um, first off, the developers at Activision Blizzard are organizing to possibly unionize, uh, specifically because they're saying that their developers at the company are not treated the same. So Emily, tell us where you're from. Tell us a little bit about your uh, podcast and, and let's get right into this. Uh, is, is she on mute? Emily, I think you're on mute. Okay. There we go. There you go. Introduce yourself. There you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I live all the way on the East Coast in the Tidewater region of Virginia. Uh, I do editing work for a small time political podcast. Uh, we change the name every other week at this point because none of us can agree on, uh, politics, let alone the topic of our (laughs) podcast. Um, and I guess you could call me a gamer girl. Uh, (laughs) you are, you you do submit almost all of our gamer, uh, articles. So Emily is, is the person that says the, New thing coming on out here. You were the one that said the Steam Deck, which has set me back $390. Thank you very much for this upcoming <laughs> Christmas. I had to get on that Friday morning to, to get one. So let's talk about this. Specifically, uh, Activision. Activision has been around for a long time. It has been. And what is going I, I worked at Microsoft. We didn't have these issues. I, again, I had a, a great upbringing working immediately at Microsoft. What is going on here at these video gaming companies? Emily, I know that you have some thoughts on this specifically. Let's go to you first. So uh, some of these issues that are pretty prevalent in both the fans and the video game industry uh, is partially due to the uh, failure to ensure the diversity of the people who work at companies like Blizzard. As of right now, according to the lawsuit filed by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, uh, only about 20% of their staff is female, uh, despite the fact that their uh, fan base is approximately 50-50. And you can see the sort of uh, toxic masculinity in action because of the games that they play. they produce like Call of the Call of Duty series and World of Warcraft, 
Um, and that issue is pretty prevalent in pretty much all of the tech industry. I don't know about like Microsoft, as you mentioned, it's not nearly as bad there. But as a woman and somebody who's pretty into technology, I do face a lot of these issues myself. So uh, it's not really a surprise that this is so much of an issue. I think the surprise is how bad it is. It is. You know, so I will say this. Tech Time Radio, I, I would say that we're diverse. We have three on this last call that we had. We had three male and three females on our call. So we got Gwen who's been a part of the show forever. Uh, Emily was on the show and Alessandra was also on our call. And then it was myself, Jamar, and Mike that were on the call. So hopefully, at least at Tech Time Radio, I would say that we try to be very neutral. We try to be very... Um, neutral in our news that we report. We just want to do the facts. We don't want to get too political in what we do. But in the video game industry, this is huge, right? So we have, I mean, just take a look at the development of games, right? Most video games created, especially these fantasy games, what do they spend time in? In a somehow we have a gal that is running in a bikini in, in that somehow has huge uh, swords, uh, and cannot be fully clothed in 90% of the industry games right now. Yet the men will be just bulky, strong, and, and, and not have anything necessarily that is over-sexualized about their characters. But why is it that the game industry continuously puts out those type of images within the environment itself? And I think it has to do specifically with the diversity within the company itself. I would agree with that because, like we've we're all gamers here in this conversation yeah we are and the video games like you were saying have represented women in a particular way for the majority of the video game era that has existed here in the history and if you are representing women a certain way that means the people making the game are thinking about women a specific way and if you then are thinking about women a specific way that's going to affect how you run your company and the players of the games, in turn, a lot of players that work at that start, grow up playing these games want to then get a career in the gaming industry. Correct. And they'll go and try to get a job at these companies. So I was doing a bunch of research specifically about why we over-sexualize uh, our characters in video games. And do you know what I found out? Sierra Online, a very old, old, old game, right? They had this uh, uh, majestic called King's Quest. Yeah, and I all, remember that. And all of the female characters in that uh, series were fully clothed. Do you know why? I bet, though. Why is that? The founders of the company. Sierra and I uh, forget the other guy, Williams, is the Sierra One Online creators. female. Yeah, that, that's, that's because uh, a guy and his wife were both the creators of Sierra Online, which used to be in the mm -hmm. California North and then mm -hmm. kind of in the Pacific Northwest also, and, and they did do that. So... Emily, when you play games and you create a character in one of your characters, do you pick a female character? Do you pick a male character? And if and whichever character you pick, how, how much does that really represent you as your gamer? So uh, that depends on the company that has produced the game. Uh, companies such as uh, Blizzard or Activision Blizzard are particularly bad about accurately representing women and how, say, they would wear armor in the game. Uh, but other games, such as uh, the Skyrim, or the Elder Scrolls series has been a lot better. Uh, but you notice in these games that the only way for a woman character to uh, be accurately portrayed and say like body type or uh, the way she dresses would be for it to be a game in which half the characters aren't even human. Uh, so it says a lot about how uh, I, as a woman, am seen as kind of uh, an other uh, kind of character in uh, gaming. Yep. But it is really, in, it's gotten better over time, but it is still pretty bad. And sometimes it's just better to play the male character because I don't really want to look at somebody in a bikini the entire time I'm playing a game. Yeah, and in a third-person view, you got the butt shot of everybody, right? So I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you're seeing you're seeing the butt shot. Of you got a bikini outfit on the chick, or you see pants on on the guy itself. Well, so let's just talk about this last thing here. What's next? So this is what I think Activision needs to do. They need to appoint more women. 
if they really want to take this serious in those lawsuits, they may need to immediately report more women to senior roles. Look into the LBTQ plus community, have people of stature join and be a part of their organization also. And hopefully this can then make an influence since Activision is a large distributor and developer in the gaming industry to other smaller companies that have things taken care of. That would certainly help. That would certainly help. So thank you, Emily, very much for joining us. Thank you for joining us on this topic. We have a lot of work to do in the video gaming industry, and Activision better get its gear together soon, or they may no longer be Activision. They may be a bunch of other split companies again if they can't figure it out. So we're going to take a commercial break here. When we come on back, we got a brand new segment. we got Jonathan's Just the Facts and our closing pick of the day. Hey, Mike, as a business owner, why do we form an LLC or a corporation? Well, that's that's pretty simple. We want to protect ourselves personally from the liability of the company. That's right, Mike. The very next thing we should be doing as business owners is protecting ourselves personally from the finances of the company. Right. Yeah, that's why you want to get help, and you can get help from the business doctor which was founded by Dr. Glenn Smith, PhD in business management, accounting, and finance. Schedule your free business evaluation and consultation at thebusinessdoctor.us. You know, enroll in the Rapid Business Credit Builder Program and get up to 100K business credit under the company's EIN and the DUNS number in less than six months. The DUNS number is really important for your rating on when you purchase other items from other businesses. Never having to use personal credit ever again. That's thebusinessdoctor.us or call 866-383-1030. Again, that's 866-383-1030 or thebusinessdoctor.us. Visit the business doctor today. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? So I just found out that 4.4 million people started business last year in the U.S. alone. Yeah, I know. I was one of them. And I bet a whole bunch of those were e-commerce businesses. That's right. A lot of them are growing so quickly now that they can't keep up with orders. This happened to someone I know. They started a business on Etsy. Then they moved to Amazon and they're crushing it and they make stickers. Pretty soon they had too much inventory in their house. They were packing everything themselves, printing postage, going to the post office all the time. And they actually ended up spending more time with the labor work than they did producing stickers. Yeah, it's a big waste of time if you're running your own business. Absolutely. But I do have good news. You don't have to ship your own orders if you run an online store. Fulfill Right can take care of your order fulfillment for you, saving you time, money, and stress. That means more time doing what you love. Really? Delegating grunt work like shipping to someone you can trust is a secret to business success. Fulfill Right is the most trusted name in order fulfillment. The reviews back the statement up too. Fulfill Right has five stars on Shopify, Google reviews, and Trustpilot from over 100 businesses just like your buddies. Yep. Wow. I'm going to go to fulfillright.com right now and I'm going to ask for a quote, but I'm going to use the special tech time link, which is fulfillright.com forward slash tech time. That's fulfillrightrite.com forward slash tech time. They're offering $100 off new signups for Tech Time listeners. You get a lot when you sign up from these guys. Service includes same day shipping, real time order and inventory tracking, dedicated customer service, and volume based discount. You know, that sounds like a great way to get your time back if your business is really taking off. To learn more about how Fulfill Right can grow your business, go to fulfillright.com forward slash tech time for $100 off when you sign up. I'm signing up today. Just the facts, man. All right. Well, Nathan, on our show today, we've we've talked about Scarlett Johansson. We've talked about video games. There's there's a strong female theme that's going on here so far. Yep. And so a couple facts here. In addition to Blizzard's trouble that they've that they're facing right now, Riot Games two years ago faced a similar discrimination lawsuit. They had to hire additional women and they got fined ten million by the state of California. Okay. Ubisoft, another video game company was also in hot water. They didn't quite face the same litigation that these two are facing. Uh, so it's Blizzard, but it's a wider trend. And now think about our superheroes. Think about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We were talking about Scarlett Johansson er earlier yep. with the Black Widow movie. And there's a lot of reasons of why people are trying to analyze why the movie's not making so much money right now. Uh, but I think part of it still is that if you think about that character... 
that character is still falling into the same representation that we see with video games. It's that type of character and the female representation is being perhaps more still based on the body image rather than on the character itself. So I think society just might not be into Black Widow as much right now. Okay. Well, I don't know. It's still better than that Jungle Cruise crap that I saw. <laughs> Let me tell you that. All right. Well, there we are. Pick of our day. We got our Smooth Ambler, 92 proof, $35. I'm giving it a, a very big thumbs up after having some junky whiskey the last couple of weeks. What would you give it, Jonathan? Oh, well, I'm going to throw this off. Because okay. I am giving it a thumbs down. I, did it, I, I totally <laughs> expect that. A thumbs down, and why is that? I'm a whiskey drinker, and this blend, they were taking several whiskeys that clearly had some faults, putting them together to try to make something that's all right. Nothing okay. stood out strongly. Nothing. There. All right, so we got our second hour coming on up. We're going to our letter segment, Ask the Expert. We're going to be talking about cloud kitchens. Make sure you guys join us after the hour top here to... Join us for our second hour. I'm Nathan Mum. We got uh, Jonathan Mum and David Brown behind the board. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week. The views expressed on this program are those of the host.
Are you tired of the same old fantasy football leagues that you hear about online? They get canceled after a year or so? Dude, everybody plays fantasy football. Dynasty owner has your back. Dude, dynasty owner unites the fun and excitement of fantasy football with the skill and strategy of the front office by incorporating a salary cap and real NFL player salaries yeah, for diehard fantasy football fanatics that really want the real GM experience. Yeah, dude. It adds a whole new level of strategy to fantasy football. And it's no more of this cheap Yahoo League. This is a full dedicated league to be participating in. Dude, they want you to have the real GM experience. It adds a whole new level of strategy to fantasy football. It's such a big difference maker that they hold three patents on it. Three. Yes, three. If you go to DynastyOwner.com, Dude. new leagues for the 2021 season are forming right now. Are you worried you won't be able to find anyone to play in your league with? Don't worry. Dynasty owners can help you fill the league with fantasy football enthusiasts like yourself. So you don't have to worry about finding enough players. Yeah, dude. You can choose to start your own league, join a league that needs to be filled, or you can even purchase a team from a previous owner if you'd like to take that team to the championship. If you're finally serious about joining the big leagues, dude, go to DynastyOwner.com and start your dynasty today. Yeah, dude. Hey, Nathan. What's up, Mike? You're a big energy drink guy, right? Yeah, and I only have one, if not two energy drinks a day. You know that stuff is overloaded with sugar and ingredients you don't even know how to pronounce. Yeah, I do. Have you ever thought of having something that's a little bit more healthy? Well, you know what? I need something with a little bit of caffeine kick because that's why I use the energy drinks. Well, you might want to try something else. Try Focus. It's a sparkling water with a spark. Focus is a delicious, health-conscious, thoughtfully caffeinated sparkling water. It's infused with a boost of natural tea caffeine and the balance of L-theanine. You get the clean energy you want without the sugar, calories, or crash. Wow, that sounds really interesting. And they have a wide range of flavors, including blood orange, mixed berry, cherry cola. Cherry cola? Yeah, crisp apple, root beer, grapefruit, I like root beer. yuzu and lime, cucumber and peach. Ooh, where can I get some, Mike? Go to www.drinkfocus.com. That's www.drinkphocus.com. And if you use our code Tech Time at checkout, you will get 20% off. 20% off? Wow. Yeah. Can't wait, can you? I'm going to go buy one of these today. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? I got some great news for you, Mike. Squadcast is a remote content production platform that makes it super easy for podcasters to create high quality video and audio remotely. Connect with anyone, anywhere, at any time using the browser-based systems with no apps to download. Dude! Every eight seconds, your recording is saved to the cloud, so you never lose a recording and you always have a backup on hand. Audio is recorded in separate tracks for easy editing. Up to 10 people are allowed in a session, and screen sharing and recording is also available. Dude, use the one-click audio mastering to make your podcast sound level and resonate to your audience. Yeah, you, you've thought about this way too much, man. I sure have, Mike. Your own private green room to test out your mic and camera levels before you enter the session. Dude, Squadcast is on a mission to amplify collaboration and empower its creators. Dude. You can even sign up now for the free workshop with eight tips on improving your podcast show notes. Go to squadcast.fm. That's squadcast, S Q U A D, cast, C A S T, dot F M. Dude. And learn more about it today. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Have you been thinking about buying a house but are unsure of where to start? You know, I have been, but it's kind of a complex process. First time home buying basics will take a possible complex and confusing process and make it a breeze. Arizona residential real estate broker Josh Madison will guide you through the step by step process as he has with over hundreds of other clients in the last 20 years. Josh wrote this book in a short, simple, easy to read format of less than 100 pages. 2021 is a whole new real estate market. So before you hand over any of your valuable information, call in realtors or even mortgage brokers, check out First Time Home Buying Basics and cover your assets. Available now in paperback or ebook form. Buy now by clicking on the Tech Time Radio link forward slash sponsors and look for First Time Home Buying Basics on your Amazon market. You can also purchase this through the website at madisonmarkets.com. That's madisonmarkets.com. Get your first time home buying experience basics today. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest. Keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology 
in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Yeah, show. dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude. That's right. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Mike likes that word, dude. So let me just tell you, poor, poor Mike Gorday, he's not here. So I can just throw him under the bus as he does the same thing to me, right, David, when I'm not on the show? Oh, yeah, but we love throwing you under the bus more than Mike. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> so, so Mike has, we do all these commercials that we do, right, for Tech Time Radio. I now have enough dialogue that I've saved up on the Mike dialogue where I can do a whole commercial. Uh, I have a, hey, Mike, hey, Mike, how you doing? Without Mike even having to be there. And let me just tell you, the biggest thing is <laughs> he's got like seven different versions of dude. We did this one thing that we were talking about. He's like, dude, 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 dude. And so I have all seven of those saved for my dude commercials. So there you go. Is that just like Groot where his dude means something entirely different? Yeah, it's exactly how I put it in there. I was like, so that that's many different. And I send those to the people that do sponsorship with us. And they all come on back. Oh, dude, that is so cool. I love it. And it's like, okay. And Mike's like, uh, I guess something that is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Welcome to our show. This is hour two, a little bit more relaxed of Tech Time Radio. We do a two hour show here in the Pacific Northwest. We're on KKNW 1150. You can reach us if you want to do a call in part of our show. We may have time in the second hour to have call in. So you can call us at 425 373 5527. Of course, you can call us at 188 298 KKNW. Uh, which is 1-88-298-5569. So if you want to ask Jonathan or I a technology question, we're both technology geeky, nerdy guys that are making this show available for the everyday common person. So you can ask us any question you'd like. All right, we have lots of topics to talk about. In our show today, uh, we're going to have our letter segment, reading of the email scams and funny phishing attempts sent to my email. I sent you a couple. We kind of read it back and forth, Jonathan. So I'll read one and then you read one, and we kind of talk a little bit about what happens to that. We have an expert that will be joining us um, from India that is focusing now in the United States on cloud kitchens. We also have a look at the top companies providing cloud kitchen delivery services. And do you know that DoorDash, your delivery service, has now decided to get into the cloud kitchen business itself also. They are creating cloud kitchens. We're going to talk about that. A little conflict of interest, like Uber Eats deciding to do their own thing. So we'll talk about that. Again, we have our... Second hour, a little bit more relaxed, but this is Tech Time Radio. We always start off our second hour with reading our connection card from our fans and our favorite Love Shack show that is on Thursdays from hang on, 1 here. to 2 p.m. One Pacific to... time right here on AM 1150 KKNW. There you go, David. You can tell where he works for it. Perfect. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get right into the Love Shack question. Here it is. What lyrics from a song do you remember most? And I want you to sing it a little bit. So what song do you remember the lyrics from the most? Oh, so I've got one, but it's not really a singable part because okay. there's a German techno group and the front man will insert these little sayings as parts of inside parts of the song. So okay. it's not really sung. So he'll just kind of like scream them out. Okay. And so what's the name of the song? Do you know? Uh, I can't necessarily say one of them on the radio here. Okay, uh, they got they got profanity words. Yeah, they do. Okay, but, <laughs> so, so so my brother listens to profanity music. David, isn't that amazing? There, there that is go. amazing. <laughs> Parental right. discretion is advised. That's yeah, right. when you get techno and dance music, your uh, your family friendliness kind of goes out the window sometimes. But anyway, yep the the line is it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Oh, that's a really good thing. Oh, that's so nice. All right, that, there'll be nothing about what my lyrics that I remember from. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. All right, next we always go around the table. David, you are up next. What is the lyrics from a song do you remember the most? Well, it's from a band, you know, that I basically grew up on in the 80s. It would be Duran Duran and The Reflex. Oh, and how does it go? It's, I'll go, I know right from the top here. Okay. Three, two, one. You've gone too far this time. But I'm dancing on the valid tide. I tell you, some boys fooling around with my chances on the danger line. I'll cross that. I guess I should stop there. There you huh? go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, David. That is phenomenal. All right. Well, my lyrics that I remember from the song the most 
Um, so I was a big Guns N' Roses. So I, I, I'm deciding, my Guns N' Roses? And I sang Guns N' Roses. I used to be able to sing pretty good Axl Rose back in the day. I could scream. Or is it my Death Leopard? I'm going to go with Death Leopard now. And I said, pour some sugar on me. So he goes like, pour some sugar on me. And they're like screaming it and all the rest of that. And I remember cranking that down I, on, on, I on the car. I actually sang that at a camp. And the campers, because I pretend to be the lead singer. Yeah. So what did campers do? They poured sugar on me while I was singing. Pour some sugar on me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Again, you can catch the Love Shack on KKNW Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. So now that we got our conversational question out of the way, we're going to move into our first segment of the second hour. We get And the letters all have songs. All right. Welcome to our letter segment. This is, of course, emails that I received during the week that are spam, phishing, virus attacks. Essentially, I've opened up my email at my Hotmail address to receive all of the spam that I can. And so I go through this and I click on these items, which then helps me get more and more spam. All right. I'm going to start off with one because it's going to go and lead into another one. I have a... Uh, Hello Fresh, an ad that came from newsletters at RUCCIPS dot com. So it's not directly from Hello Fresh. An endless summer of flavors, fourteen meals plus free shipping. Get started today. If you receive this email from a third party marketing partner, please forward it to Hello Fresh, as Hello Fresh is not directly affiliated with this. So it it says in this ad that they're sending to me to click on this link. It essentially says that if I receive this ad, that to forward it to HelloFresh if it's a spam ad. So they don't, what they had to do is they had to cut and paste the HelloFresh information, then put their own endless ad in there for newsletters at RUCCIPS.com. I have never signed up for anything on HelloFresh. I have nothing to do with HelloFresh. I guess it's a great opportunity to get free meals for the summer. When I click on this link, it says that I have ran, I have won a brand new iPad. Oh, so, that's exciting. So, so it's really exciting. I click on the link here, and then all of a sudden, instead of my 14 free meals plus a free one in shipping, David, I get a brand new iPad, and all I have to do is pay for shipping. Now, the shipping is like $39 that they're going to have, but they'll send it to me immediately if I put in my credit card number so I can pay for the shipping and have that taken care of. So what are they trying to do for me, Jonathan? They're trying to get me to put in my credit card, steal $39 from me, and send me a fake iPad so that I can then sell it, sign up for HelloFresh. Oh, I, I doubt they'll even send you anything. I don't think they will either. <laughs> I think you are correct. All right, now it's your turn to read one of these great letters that I've received. Well, the HelloFresh one is kind of good as well because during the pandemic, as we're going to talk about later, a lot of people were ordering more meals being delivered to their houses. Correct. We're going to be talking about cloud kitchens in, in a little bit coming up here. That's correct. That's right. So so going on that, we I have another HelloFresh spam email here. Okay. This one's a little different in the sense that uh, what this one is trying to do, it's got a HelloFresh ad right at the top, almost as if it was lifted from their website. Okay. And then... There's, I don't know how many pages you handed to me here of some article behind seven, this. Isn't there 17 pages? Uh, I'm getting to the end here. This one's talking about Bitcoin. This next one is talking about regulations and issuing. This one's talking about the Coindesk DeFi Index. Coindesk being related to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. The next page, a message from ZKTube. There's, I, I don't think anybody's going to scroll to the bottom of this email here, but it's almost, I'm wondering if this is a successful spam email from the sense that if you have so much text that's legitimate in your email, is there some percentage of legitimate text that's allowing it through a spam filter? Uh -huh. You're not, you're never going to scroll down all the way to the bottom of the email. You're going to see whatever's at the top of your email. Correct. And you're going to react to that, whether Correct. that's the click here whether that's a picture for you to look at or something that says your account has been compromised, you're looking at the top of the email. And uh, what, what email address sent that to us? Oh, this one is, um, it's not even worth saying. It's a bunch of random letters and numbers at gmail.com. So uh, yeah, I kind of don't think HelloFresh would probably be using a Gmail account to send that. Do you think that? Oh, absolutely not. That's one of the best ways that you can 
know if your email is legitimate is to have check in your on every email at the top who is it actually coming from and sometimes i've seen some really good spam emails where it will replace a letter with a number or even more sophisticated they will have a letter with a slight accent on top of it. Correct. So, so, they, so different keyboard translation, so it comes through that. That's correct. So let me tell you, that that, that was a, a great uh, spam uh, item. Essentially, it was selling every single service that this spam company must have did all at one time to see if it could get through. Well, my next one, speaking of uh, Coinbase, I you know, Coinbase must know that I'm really interested because I received an email from Coinbase, but it was sent from the no reply at OAH. S A R H P five six dot com. So that really doesn't sound like it's Coinbase, but it sure it, doesn't. But what it says is we couldn't verify your ID. So we need to confirm your account identification. Please verify your ID. Please provide the document with your correct legal name. If you're having trouble considering using a different device or camera to upload your photo, verify your ID again. So essentially, when you click on this, it asks you, we got a nice picture there. It asks you to essentially upload a picture photo to verify my Coinbase account. When it, if I would do that, then essentially the no reply at osawhatever.com would essentially have my identification, my That's information, right. and everything available for there. Absolutely has nothing to do with Coinbase. Absolutely, completely fake. And it did have an upload that went to a Google Drive. So if you're gonna upload something to a Google Drive for a company called Coinbase, probably should be a little bit uh, concerned because it was an osarh.com email address. And none of that made any sense at all of why somebody would do that. But these spammers are trying to take advantage of, as, as you've talked about before, people losing their credentials for their cryptocurrencies. Yep, uh, Nick talked about it in the first hour, right? So yeah. they're trying to take advantage of it. All right, let's do one more that you have there. Uh, you read one more of the spam attacks, and then we'll get continuing on in our show. Well, this is another similar one that wants you to take an action right away. Dear, okay. Dear Microsoft user, starting on the 30th of July, that you didn't have much time. You you printed this July 30th. So and it came the same day. That's the same day. <laughs> that yeah. if your email does not get confirmed uh, to accept the new privacy security upgrade, that Microsoft will shut down your account. Uh, that's, it's and a, it's amazing. My email still works today. Oh, that's great. And, and that's what was great. it sent to? Was it sent to my Hotmail account? This was sent to a different distribution alias. So it was not sent to yours because you can mask it or have your email as, say, the BCC on an email. So Correct. this was not directly addressed to you as well. So, so Microsoft is just guessing that I didn't have my new credentials that were available for it. And they were going to disconnect a... Uh, Hotmail account, which is free because right. I, I didn't click on the new security settings. But this was your Microsoft account because oftentimes people will have their Microsoft account linked to their computer if they're signed in on yep. Windows 10 yep. with their Xbox. And and in in uh, credit to Mike here, this is preying on a lot of people's uh, fear that their account will be lost, that they're they're going to lose something right away if they don't take an action. And there's plenty of emails that we do receive that are legitimate. We've updated our terms of service. Then the next time you sign in, you need to accept them or we will close your account. The legitimate websites perform the same action. So it's a popular technique that scammers can use because if you're already used to ignoring a terms of service and just clicking accept, and you get an email saying that you need to do it again, somebody's going to say, oh, I got to do it again, and click that. That's right. You know, Mike has a an off-the-air uh, terminology for people like that, but we're not going <laughs> to go into that. I'm going to start about my email. I <laughs> hate my email. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Mr. Gorday, uh, if you're joining us for the second hour, and you say, why is Jonathan in the seat? We talked a little bit about it the first hour. Uh, Mike Gorday is at home. He has received a uh, COVID-19 variant Four or the Delta variant. Uh, he was fully vaccinated. I do know that he is recovering. I talked with him on the way into the show today, and we talked a little bit, and he is uh, feeling much better. He said it was very interesting because I haven't had COVID. I have been vaccinated. I know you've been vaccinated also. I have as well. Yep, and, and I think your whole family has been vaccinated. Well, you and your wife have been vaccinated. Is that That's correct? That's right. right. Our kids have not. Your kids have not. Me and my wife and my kids I've uh, been vaccinated also. So we are very important about making sure you're safe. 
He said, very interesting in COVID-19, that he was sick and sick and sick. And then he woke up this morning and he said it was like it's gone. No. He said, he said, no, he did. He said it was, he said a little bit tired still, but he said it was really odd. It wasn't like you're getting rid of a cold and then you kind of feel better and you kind of feel better. He said it went from dying and it was going to be horrible to essentially being able to be back and saying, wow, it just happened. So, you know, the COVID-19 is a serious deal. Make sure you take care of yourselves. I know there may be some new mandates that need to be taken care of. Uh, if you haven't been vaccinated, then I, I would highly recommend an opportunity to do that to help us get to that huge, huge herd immunity area so we don't have to worry about variant four, variant Delta, and the next one that comes after Delta and all these other ones. So definitely take care of that. Well, we're going to go to a commercial break. When we come on back, we're really excited to have a guest all the way from India. So it's way in the morning, their time, and but they have joined us. They're going to be talking about their cloud kitchen. Uh, they have a, an agreement with a big VC company in California that is going to help release their cloud kitchen technology to the States because it's been successfully uh, being run in India. And he's got some secret sauce and some technology questions that we have for you. So I'm Nathan Mum. We got Jonathan Mum over here, both mums. So it's a dual mum show. David Brown behind the board. And we'll see you after this commercial break. Upper Left Corner is a PNW true crime podcast now streaming on all major podcast platforms. If you get excited when your favorite true crime podcast tells a story about a place that you've been to or the town that you live in, then Upper Left Corner podcast is for you. Each week, I tell you a story of a crime that has taken place in the PNW and give you background about the town the crime occurred in. If you like true crime, check out Upper Left Corner podcast now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and more. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service, knowledge, and the little things that make a big difference. Service. Selection. Advice. Community involvement. Competitive prices. Convenience. Located near you. And the things you need, such as... House keys. Lawn and garden. Plumbing. Electrical. Hardware. Grills. Outdoor living supplies. And even nuts and bolts. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Evergreen Way in Everett, Lake Stevens, and now Stanley. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. So you gotta jam out to this music. This is what Mike always does. It's always sitting in the corner like, I like that song. Other songs he doesn't say anything to, but he's like, I like that song. All right, welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. We got Jonathan Mum here, my brother, joining on the show. So he uh, has filled in on our original podcast show a couple times. So we have Gwen who only now wants to work with Mike Roday, she says. So, so, so <laughs> she is the Mike Roday villain. So if I'm out, you'll probably always see Gwen. So she likes working with Mike. And then if uh, Mike's out, you'll probably see Jonathan. I think that's what we kind of have now set up as our as our processes of what we got. Sounds like on. a game plan to me. It does. And then we always have David. David's always here. So yeah, he's on right. top. And he, he's, he's, the, he's been here the most. He's the glue of the <laughs> station that keeps us running. And he puts up different fingers, as you notice, during some of the things. And you just got to make sure you don't get the number one finger. That's 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 <laughs> That'll get you in trouble. All right. Up next, we have a special interview with Cloud Kitchens. So Ghost Kitchens, Cloud Kitchens, these are all popping up all over everywhere. What about Dark Kitchens? That's the same terminology. Okay. So Dark Kitchens, Ghost Kitchens, Cloud Kitchens. Essentially, when I I, I did a, uh, a Wikipedia ad, oh, oh, there went the papers. I did a Wikipedia ad on them, and all of the names are essentially the same. Pretty much the difference is how they run, what's in there, but they're all about the same and what they're doing for technology. We're going to be talking about the founders of ZFW. Um, and ZFW Hospitality is in charge of cloud kitchens, specifically uh, in India that they've been very successful with. And they're now coming into the United States so it's really excited. We, we're going to be talking all about the equipment, their workforce, and essentially to start to hit the gas, they have the ability to turn your ideas into a cloud kitchen, pretty much brick and mortar store so people can come pick it up in deliveries. That matter of a fact, that quick. So we are going to bring up our interview guest. And this is a segment we call Ask the Experts. Perfect. Thank you, David. And I am going to butcher this name, so I'm going to need help with this because it is Madhav Kasturia. Is that I, I, I don't know if that's even close. I'm going to have to get the pronunciation on what we have. But let me talk a little bit about this. Asia's first food delivery accelerator, ZFW, has a launch pad that provides an end-to-end -end ecosystem that provides the entrepreneur to get capital 
mentoring and global network operations as far as operators, investors, and corporate people to rapidly scale their business. New Delhi-based ZFW Hospitality on Thursday of this week announced its foray into the financial capital of the country where it plans to support over 15 brands. Now, they have Baskin and Robbins. In India, Baskin and Robbins comes to them. So, you know, I, I like Baskin and Robbins, 31 flavors. So they, they got them. They have 15 brands with 50 dark kitchens or cloud kitchens. Uh, and fulfillment centers, ZFW uh, will support the growth of over these 15 brands across India and is specifically working to come to the United States. So first off, thank you for joining us on the show. And I need, is that Medhoff? How do I pronounce your first name? All right. Okay. David says, keep talking. David's working on something on the background. So we're going to talk a little bit more about cloud kitchens then, David. Well, uh, I've heard about the dark kitchens, which you said are the same as these cloud kitchens. Yep. So if you open up your app, that for DoorDash or your food delivery app, some of the options that you see in this, in your application, are for restaurants that technically don't exist. That's correct. No brick and mortar store. They, they are just using a cloud kitchen or a kitchen uh, item for that. And so when you're ordering, say, a hamburger from the particular restaurant that you've chosen, if you're on DoorDash, you're not going to the restaurant. You don't see the business. You don't want to go see the business. You just want your food delivered. Correct. And so it's it's really of no concern to you necessarily where that food is coming from as long as you got your food delivered to you. So during COVID-19, some restaurants got in trouble for this, right? So they I, did. Some people were delivering it from their kitchens. They were telling the delivery drivers to come into their personal home kitchens to deliver <laughs> their food. I saw a New York report about that. and They I were hustling on the side there. They were hustling. They were doing their own <laughs> kitchens before cloud kitchens were in place or before they could use a cloud kitchen they were using their home kitchen to sell uh food out of that i i, I told my wife that it would have been great I, I like to grill you know i like to grill that's right but i could have had uh, uber drivers just come on up to my house i can make some burgers and i could be selling my my great burgers for seven to ten bucks a pop and and be ready to go from there so um how we doing there david okay all right <laughs> let's just keep on going all right let's talk about um, I'm going to go on to the next thing here with our cloud kitchens. Let's talk about cloud kitchens. So cloud kitchens menus are optimized for ease of production and the reliability of food quality upon delivery. Often physical locations or out of town industry complexes are known as cloud kitchens. Specifically what they need to do is they need to offer driver pickup and parking. Sometimes they have driver waiting areas, often with screens and monitors of their ordered items and even additional items for them to have some free samplings, free food. And sometimes if, if you go to like a Red Robin pickup, and I know because I, I did some delivery driving uh, before COVID hit and, and I was really, I did it just because I wanted to do it. I wanted to understand what it was about. <laughs> Essentially, if you go to a Red Robin place, you would actually have uh, fries available for all the drivers. Oh, wow. And so you could get some free food, you could get a free pop and, and, these perks for your delivery drivers add a whole new level of importance in the cloud kitchens really focus on the delivery because they're not a brick and mortar store, right? You can't walk up to them. Right. Essentially, these drivers go to these cloud kitchens to pick up the food and have it ready to go. And a lot of restaurant businesses really needed to pivot during the pandemic because they didn't have the opportunity to have their customers come into the store. And as you've mentioned, with the delivery of the food products, some food products don't trans they don't uh, get delivered well. If yep. if you've got it in a clamshell container and your your hamburger bun ended up being all soggy because the steam was just trapped inside the whole time, some items that you would normally have in your restaurant aren't necessarily good food delivery items. That's correct. So I saw some legitimate businesses, um not the hustlers, yep. but some legitimate businesses make their own little mini new restaurant with a different subset of what the restaurant would normally offer so that they could sell items separate from the reputation of the company or the expectations that you might have from that particular restaurant to get a food item that is both convenient for them to make money off of and would be delivered well. So these dark kitchens and cloud kitchens. Um, I, let, let's say I wanted to do Nathan's, uh, what would you sell? I would sell, well, you know what? I did some pretty good, uh, fried chicken for 4th of July. How was my fried chicken? Was it okay? Oh, it was good. It was pretty good. So 4th of July, I, I, my first time, my foray into Kentucky fried chicken didn't have quite the, the, the recipe I want yet, 
But right, the secret I've, recipe isn't there yet. Not but. not there, but it was it did taste really good. Yes. And and for the first time, most of the time I botch my first time I do food for the first ten or fifteen time. I can do some really good rice, a lot of different stuff that I can make. So Nathan's we're gonna do Nathan's Kentucky fried chicken. So sure. been, all right. So I have that. If I wanted to sell that, I could go and I could lease space from one of these cloud kitchens. And essentially what I do is I can pay a monthly fee, a weekly fee, and I can even sometimes these cloud kitchens have people that will actually do the work for it myself. So I wouldn't have to show up. I wouldn't have to hire an employee, but I could say, here's my recipe for fried chicken. I essentially can go to this cloud kitchen. There may be four other people there, five other people there. I may have just a corner of the cloud kitchen, but I can make my delivery food, open up my business available on Grubhub, available on Uber Eats, any of these delivery services, DoorDash, that are available on that, let people order. And during the time that my store is open, I can take orders and deliveries. And when the delivery driver comes on in, it'll say pick up order because they all come with a certain ID number. It'll be ready there. The delivery driver takes it and, and has it ready to go. Now, there's a couple different processes that these cloud kitchens do. Some of the cloud kitchens you have to pay for the, the rental space and you pay a flat fee. So if I need it for two to four hours, I'm paying a rental fee. Like a rent-a-kitchen. Like a rent-a-kitchen. So it's a commercial kitchen, which is important because as I've tried to create a commercial kitchen at my house and, and I have to do that and I will get there one day. I'll have a restaurant kind of in my house outside. It cannot be your standard kitchen that you cook the food on. It has to be commercial. It has to go through uh, full approval. It has to be taken care of and, and what needs to be uh, done, the cloud kitchens already have those approvals. So I can immediately go on in there. They already have the standard pots, pans, utensils, everything available to, to meet code, meet all the state and then uh, local regulations to provide the food. Some of these places will take a percentage. So depending on what cloud kitchen I want to use, one I could go on in and I could go in with absolutely no cost upfront. Um, I have to sometimes buy the food from them and they have a selection of food that is already pre-done from the Food Services of America and all these large organizations that do restaurant food. Some of them don't have it, so I can bring in my own food that I have at the same time, and they'll take a percentage of it. So if I'm selling it for $10 and I have to pay about 20 to 30% for Uber or, or for any of these delivery drivers, then they'll take a percentage on top of that also. So the cloud kitchen technology is so different in what's available out there on the market that everybody can take a look at it. And what's happening is this is becoming hugely successful. These companies are coming out of the middle of no man's land that are becoming very hot, sought after cloud kitchen companies for burgers. Uh, Gwen Way, one of our producers that fills in all the time, she she knew a list of these companies. She had this uh, burger place and this other place and this other place, all cloud kitchens that she orders from pretty regularly herself. And she was like, these are the people to use and take a look at. I looked at a couple of them and we'll be talking about that. So does it make a difference for you as a consumer to order from a cloud kitchen or a regular kitchen? If you're ordering, because you guys order some delivery sometimes, don't you? I, I'm usually getting it myself okay. but because I didn't necessarily trust other people with my food. Okay. But that's just a personal choice. I know lots of people have increased their ordering through apps because of the pandemic and not wanting to venture out of the house or or they just ran out of time and wanted their lunch delivered during their work day while they're at home uh, like they used to do when they were at work. So, yep. so would, would it make a difference to you as a consumer if it was a cloud kitchen company you've never heard of or if it was McDonald's? or Wendy's or somebody else that's that's a known uh, company out there if you were to order, let's say, a burger. Would that make a difference to you? I'm the type of person that will try new foods okay. and look at the reviews for the food. So, no, th it wouldn't really matter for me if this was necessarily tied to a particular restaurant or coming from one of these cloud kitchens that had somebody there making the food instead. If If the food was good, I would be ordering it. I'm not necessarily going to just order from... From Wendy's or McDonald's every time I pull up DoorDash. All right, that makes sense. Let me let me talk about what we have here. All right, what's that, David? What's that? We, we take a break right now? All right, so we're going to come on back. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the food delivery business. We have some companies that are some of the top ones that offer food delivery, and we may have our interview ready to go with that, too. I'm Nathan Mum. We got Jonathan over here. David's behind the board. We'll see you guys after this break. 
Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. We got Jonathan is co-hosting. Jonathan Mum. That's a great name. Has anybody ever said Mum's the word to you? A uh, few times. A few times, yeah. That's, so I, I, I am going to, as we're talking about cloud kitchens, uh, as you know, I have bought a food trailer that I'm uh, fixing renovating. up. I'm yeah. renovating right now. And when it comes on out, it's going to be called Mums the Word. But instead of W O R D, I'm going to take the W in the front and change it to F. So it's going to be like a, uh, like a, I want to say graffitied F. Okay. And then you have O, and the R is going to be another O and D. So you have Mums the Word, which will be there, and then it'll be graffitied Mums the Food. There you uh-huh. go. Uh huh. Oh, you like that? Depending on what, how you read it. That's right. So it's pretty funny there. Okay. All right. I spent a lot of time on that. So don't don't say that it sucks when we go out to dinner <laughs> afterwards. All right. So what is it? A cloud kitchen specifically provides all the operations you need for a virtual restaurant. Let's talk about that. The food delivery business has grown to a $200 billion industry. Of course. Obviously. That is amazing. Due to the shifting change in behavior, nearly half of consumers prefer to eat at home. Absolutely. If if anybody is out there with kids. Yeah. Um. Especially, and it, and you got a couple young kids. I've got young kids under the age of five that yeah. put everything in their mouth, whether it's food or not. So in this past year and a half, you don't want to go places where they're putting their hands on every surface and then putting it into their mouth for some reason. That so, makes sense. So we've been getting a lot of extra takeout and not going to restaurants. That makes sense. So Uber is even more optimistic. They think in the next two years that this market will be at $795 billion with 91 million monthly users. Now, Uber Eats is currently the most popular food delivery app. Consumers are increasingly willing to pay a significant amount for the convenience of having their food delivered. Specifically, Uber targets with their technology when you order, what time you order, when you frequently ordered, and they have a whole algorithm specifically designed for their app itself. It's amazing. It knows what I liked, how quick a delivery was taken care of. As a delivery driver, it will tell you if you're running late. It has the ability to have two-way text without having your information. So if the person says, hey, make sure to bring ketchup, make sure you put that in the notes before you order your food because when you're driving, it's tough to go back and get ketchup. But as an Uber driver, I think one time we actually stopped at a different restaurant, McDonald's, to actually get ketchup to help them have a Wendy's deal (laughs) so they could have them available. But Consumers are increasingly willing to pay for the significance of having their food delivery. Now, with technology in mind, some of the biggest players in the cloud kitchen space are gaining momentum. And we're going to talk about them. It's very interesting on who's the big boys in this area. So let's talk about number one. We got uh, cloud kitchens. It's actually called cloud kitchens. Uh, Uber founder and former chief executive Travis Kalnick who resigned from the company in June of 2017 amid controversy, has returned to the food delivery market and he has a new investment fund called 10100, which is 10100, that is essentially taking on $150 million in the city storage systems. So he's focusing on undervalued real estate. He is building two businesses, Cloud Kitchen and Cloud Retail. The former's opening large-scale shared kitchens with taking advantages of the delivery-only boom itself. The other primary business is its own incorporated app that will receive 30% less cost than the current apps that are available. So this old ex-Uber person is creating cloud kitchens 
Speci- to try to undercut. To undercut the current provider that's in there with their technology, and then you have to use his app to use the services that are available out there. And it, with, with this strategy, you're eliminating the number one cost that a lot of restaurants might have normally Thirty percent. No, a restaurant. It's a thirty percent. In the sense of the location of yep. your restaurant, if you're being able to build a cloud kitchen in a warehouse district with cheap rent versus the restaurant retail, where you're at a retail commercial area, that's a high dollar retail storefront that you're going to host there. So essentially, cloud kitchens has in their process that when you pull on up, a person will actually run out the food to the delivery driver's car in a a sequential process that will have them all move into different lanes and numbers so they can pick up their food and guaranteeing the drivers to be there no longer than three minutes per order. And the more orders you get out, the more money you're getting. That's what you do as a driver. You want to get those tips, right? So that if you can have a process where I'm pulling in for three minutes versus taking someplace else at a different app, I'm going to make a big decision because sometimes those restaurants take a little while. And and I've used Uber, the normal taxi service before, yep. to get somewhere. The number one thing that Uber always needs is drivers. They do. If you don't have enough drivers... You have frustrated customers that are going to try to use a different app. They're going to try to get to wherever they're going a different way. So if you have all of these incentives for the users, the drivers, to, to deliver your food and to use your service instead of, say, Uber Eats, the, the drivers are going to go towards the one that has the most benefits to them. Kitchen United, former executives from Taco Bell McDonald's, have teamed up with their app, $40 million institutional funding for $10 million dollars. Blah, 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 blah. They are specifically, Kitchen United is coming out with their own app. Their app is essentially guarantee you that you can order your item in three clicks. Okay. So that if you already have your credit card already in there, that you can choose your restaurant, choose your food, and have it ordered in three clicks. Currently, most orders take anywhere between eight to 15 clicks to get an order by the time you put it into a cart, by the time you check out. They are specifically spending the time on their technology to guarantee a three-click experience. Well, that's not quite as much as our, our, non-exi- our non-existent sponsors, Amazon's One Click. But yes, correct. it is still much faster than the current process. Uh, and then we have our last deal here, DoorDash. Okay. So DoorDash is a delivery service company. They have decided that they will soon uh, be providing their own delivery kitchens where they'll be making their own food on their own existing app that already exists and will be able to take the local restaurants in certain areas and undercut them by up to 50%. So if I want a burger and I can get my burger from Dick's Burgers, if they're delivery service or McDonald's or one of these uh, areas, or I can get it from the DoorDash special cloud kitchen app for half price, what am I going to choose? The consumer is probably going to go with the lower price. And these applications, all of the data that they've been collecting about these orders, it's in the old days, you would have to go to your favorite restaurant and the server there would recognize you and they might give you an extra set of fries or a good deal because they know that you're a good patron. Well, yeah. all of these food delivery Or hot wing apps, chickens at Applebee's down the street, but we won't say that. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All of these food delivery apps, they know what the orders are, what popular foods are. Oh, hot wings are more popular on Sunday and Monday evenings, for example, for some reason. That type of information allows them to essentially do what other businesses do in any market. You find a way to undercut the person that is currently in the lead position and just do it at a cheaper price, and you're going to steal the sales from that top company. That's exactly correct. All right. Well, we're going to go to a commercial break, and when we come on back, we are excited. We are going to be talking about our LACE Awards, the Literature Award of Streaming Entertainment. We did this last year. Um, these are special awards that come on out. We are essentially are in like the Oscars where they announce the in- nominations of these people. We're going to be talking about some categories and some of the nominations that have happened for our LACE Awards. The LACE Awards will be coming up in August like we always do. Mike Gorday will be back. We'll make sure we dress up the the whole studio with a bunch of stuff because he just loves that, doesn't he, David? He just loves having tons of stuff there. And and we're going to be talking about that on what we're going to call, uh, again, my Nathan Nugget to end our show. So we're going to take a commercial break. Thank you guys for being a part of Tech Time Radio. I'm Nathan Mum. So we got Jonathan over here and David behind the board. 
Hey, honey, did you hear what I heard? Hmm, what's that, babe? I heard Mike over there at Tech Time Radio. He's he's like battling the he's or he's in the like that the you know the, the swimming with the sharks and that singles arena, if you will. You know? Oh, bless his heart. Oh. And I also heard like you did that maybe things aren't going so great. You know what he needs, babe? I think he needs to spend a little time in Love Shack. Yeah, the Love Shack. The Love Shack that airs every Thursday at 1 p.m. PST on KKNW 1150. Come on, Mike. Come on over and join us. We got gotcha. you. Your business deserves the same expertise as that of a Fortune 500 company. If you need a CIO-level service, why hire a full-time staff member at $250,000 a year when you can get this on-demand service for fractions of the cost? As your CIO on demand, we'll give you the steps you need to take so as to minimize interruption to your business and profitability and provide you and your business with training and education to prevent future attacks. To get an efficiency review for your business today, contact us at www.ee-services.com. Hey, Mike, as a business owner, why do we form an LLC or a corporation? Well, that's, that's pretty simple. We want to protect ourselves personally from the liability of the company. That's right, Mike. The very next thing we should be doing as business owners is protecting ourselves personally from the finances of the company. Right. Yeah, that's why you want to get help, and you can get help from The Business Doctor, which was founded by Dr. Glenn Smith, PhD in Business Management, Accounting, and Finance. Schedule your free business evaluation and consultation at thebusinessdoctor.us. You know, enroll in the Rapid Business Credit Builder Program and get up to 100K business credit under the company's EIN and the DUNS number in less than six months. The DUNS number is really important for your rating on when you purchase other items from other businesses never having to use personal credit ever again. That's thebusinessdoctor.us or call 866-383-1030. Again, that's 866-383-1030 or thebusinessdoctor.us. Visit the business doctor today. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. We got Jonathan Mum filling in for Mr. Mike Corday that was not able to make it as he is sick at home. But I do know that he is watching the show and listening. So, Mike, I, I'm sure glad that you are listening. Hopefully, you, uh, we haven't thrown you under the bus too badly. Yeah, dude. That's right. <laughs> okay. First, we need to do uh, it's the end of the month. So, we have our story coffee. This is the best coffee ever. This is the best. Forget Starbucks and Miss Mermaid or whatever the heck it is. Story coffee. The story with an I. Story, S-T-O-R-I, coffee. That, they are a single origin uh, company where women essentially grow, cut, ship, and have everything to send this to the state so it can then roast and be available fresh on your area. I need a one through a thousand. I need you to give me a person's name, and then I'll read kind of their email off, but not all the way, so that they know that they won the bag of Story coffee that will be shipped to their house and have it tasted. So give me a number. One five zero one hundred fifty. One hundred fifty. One hundred fifty. That's not as bad as what Mike does when he does like nine hundred and thirty-seven four five. Okay, I have this uh, email is twenty t w e n t a number. Then it's got uh, another number, uh, and then it ends with u n c at hotmail.com congratulations you are the winner of story coffee all right there you go congratulations yay all right we're going to move into our next segment here um which we have time to do we're really excited about this is the lace award so this is an award show that we created ourselves um specifically dealing with the entertainment business of streaming services so pretty again, soon it's not just going to be your own everybody's going to have their awards based on streaming services. I know, So, but we were first. So this is our second <laughs> annual. Now, once COVID's done, we're going to have a big hotel. We'll have people come on off and read these. I can tell you already that for the awards show that we're working on, I'm getting video and audio for each of these shows to kind of put in there like they do this deal so you can listen to that and take care of it. So here we got the new service award. These are the nominees, not the winners, but these are the nominees. We have IMDB TV. Have you seen IMB, IMDB TV? I've used it. So Leverage, the new series of Leverage is out on that, brand new series that's out on that. It is essentially, it's been around for a year as a premiere service. They had a, a bunch of old content that okay. they've had before, but their new content deliveries, a year old, and this all goes from July to July. Discovery Plus, have you seen Discovery Plus? I have. 
Everything's got to be a plus, right? <laughs> the Peacock Network was nominated because they came in in July, so they weren't in last year. So the Peacock Network, I just got done. Uh, we'll be talking about another nominee here watching a show there. That was the best show, Dr. Death. Have you seen that? Uh, no, but I'm getting ads for it because I'm watching the Olympics. Oh, my word. It is amazing. It is amazing. You'll never do a surgery again. Okay. And <laughs> Paramount Plus, because Paramount Plus got rebranded from CBS All Access. Those are the nominations for the new service award. If you were to pick a winner, and we don't have winners here, if you were to pick a winner of any of those services, what would you pick? Right now, it's it's all Peacock because of the Olympics. And I think it's... Peacock's pretty good with that streaming service, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Here's our, here's our next thing, our real world award we got is... Um, and these are leaders in reality TV. Sexy Beasts on Netflix. Have you seen that? I have not seen that. I have not. Expedition Back to the Future on is Discovery. That related to the movie Back to the Future? Uh, I don't know if it is or not because I haven't seen it either. I got to okay. get through these things. Um, Web of Darkness, Amazon Prime. We have Race to the Center of the Earth by Disney Plus and The Real World Homecoming, New York on Paramount Plus. Those were the nominations for leaders in reality TV. I'm going to have to check some of those out. I haven't seen many of those. I haven't either. I gotta, I'm trying to get through all this. Now, the Independent Award, we have Breaking the Standard. These are unique series or unique shows that come on out that don't fit into a specific area. We have Breaking the Standard Trends. We have No Man Land uh, on Disney+. Plus. We have First Cow on Prime Video. We have The Lodge on Hulu. And we have Promising Young Women on Prime Video. I as much time as I get for streaming, there's just so much out there that you probably didn't know some of those existed. Did I you? didn't know some of those. There existed. you go. Now our best series awards series within the last year, we have the Queen's Gambit. Have I you saw seen that? that one. That's pretty good, isn't it? It is. Uh, we have the Boys season two from Amazon Prize. The series is a pretty big. That's a big category. We got Cruel Summer. We got The Crown because they had a new season of The Crown. We have Loki, and we have Doctor Death. Have you seen Dr. Deck on Peacock? You got to watch it. I've seen the oh. ads. Oh, oh, it is so good. And I like that actor who comes from Fringe. Uh, yes, yeah, so you so. got the Fringe guy, and you have Alec Baldwin, and you have Christian Slater. Right. Oh, that's a pretty strong cast. That is. All right. Best documentary award we have here. This is documentary movie or series on streaming. Again, these are all award nominees for our Lace Awards. These are all shows that are available on streaming devices. You can't get them anywhere else other than streaming devices. We have the documentary movie or series. We have My Teacher Octopus. I started, Did you see that? I started watching the episode one, yes. I have not seen that at all. Is it pretty, <laughs> I, heard it's, I heard it's pretty good, but I haven't seen that. Framing Britney Spears on Hulu. Uh, uh, it's on my list. That's on your list too? Yep. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Summer of Soul on Hulu. I haven't heard of that you one. You haven't heard of ha Pele on Netflix? No. You haven't heard about that? And then Surviving Death on Netflix. No. these Some of these must be newer ones. They are. Some of these are newer. Yeah. In the last couple months, that's correct. Yeah. Our best sci-fi awards. we got to try to get through all these. Science fiction movie or series. Here's the nominees. The Expanse. Okay. Godzilla, I've seen that. Godzilla versus Kong. Snyder Cut, Cut of the Justice League. Oh. The Tomorrow War. And Stowaway on Netflix. Aren't those good? Though that's a pretty strong list, and streaming services have really been able to have these niche genres that, I mean, science fiction has its fans, yep. but if these streaming services can just really put money into shows that are, are targeted towards a specific fan base, and they end up really good. Sci-fi is a good idea. To do. So, I mean, I mean, that, I mean, Stowaway, Netflix, phenomenal. I watched that. Phenomenal. Tomorrow War, Amazon Prime, that's got my guy Chris Pratt in that. Love that one, too. Snyder Cut of Justice League. Huge success for HBO Max, Godzilla versus Kong, HBO Max, HBO Max, and The Expanse, Amazon Prime. I mean, The Expanse is not a is not a new entry on that necessarily either. I mean, that, they've been doing quite a good job. That's so right. We also have a brand new uh, category called the Social Streaming Award. This is the ability for you to watch. There's Disney Plus has Group Watch, oh. so you can watch uh, with with a couple people. Right. Hulu has Watch Party. Amazon has Watch Party, and Movie Anywhere's has Watch Together. So we're going to go through and evaluate all of those and see which one is the best for that. Thank you, David. Um, we are getting close to our time, but I got a couple more awards here. The most important award is the Master Award, the best overall streaming service. Will it be Amazon Prime, Netflix, Sling TV, Disney Plus, 
or HBO Max. Those are all going to be talked about. Our readers and our uh, producers are helping putting that list together. They will get on out for people to vote for that. We will take that information and we will announce the Lace Awards in three weeks. We're really excited about that. Hopefully you guys had a great time on Tech Time Radio. Jonathan, how was it being in the studio? Oh, it's great to be back on the show again. I enjoy you being back. It was uh, not the whiskey you liked, but I absolutely <laughs> loved it compared to what it was. I'm glad the standard was raised for my guest appearance. Yes, yeah, so, and you know what? Next week we'll have some really good stuff, too. And then, <laughs> and then when Mike gets back, we'll, we'll go back to the cheap stuff that's available. David, thank you so much for doing everything behind the board. I know we had a guest that didn't quite make an interview. Uh, Wireless Connection got him, and we'll try to get him on at a later time. I'm Nathan Mum. You got Jonathan over here, David behind the board. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that mmm moment in technology today. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. And also signing up on our YouTube page, where you get to see us live in video. Yep, you can see us chat and have some fun. It's youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week. The views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily...